Registration has officially closed for the NACT spring season day one qualifiers. We have 156 teams registered and currently the brackets are out for who is going to be competing. They're still being shuffled for what order it's going to be in, but the teams are there who did make it into the NACT stage one qualifiers. And today we're going to be putting together a tier list to see where we rate these teams in the NACT spring season. Okay, guys, so today the tier list is going to be super simple. We're going to be rating these teams D through S, S being the highest, D being the lowest, and this is all based on how good we think they are compared to other teams in North America. This has nothing to do with the international level, but it definitely has to do with who they're going actually against in the NACT spring season. This is based off my own experience in tournaments that I've hosted and seen them compete in or tournaments that I've seen them compete in local scenes around North America. Now, if you guys have any advice or if you know anything about these teams, definitely feel free to let me know. Or if there's any other teams that you would like us to add in the future, definitely drop it in the comments. But let's not waste any time. Let's jump straight into it. And the first team on the board is going to be Team Ace. Now, Team Ace, it's a hard one, right? We've seen them compete all year round last year. I've actually hosted a couple of tournaments and they were a part of it. Uh, the last tournament that I actually hosted that they competed in was the Cyberpunk, and they did pretty well. I want to say they came in third place in the Mobile Legends Scrim Academy. They actually beat BTK and took them out of the entire event, so I got to give them credits there. Uh, back then, they had Sky as their mage and Mobile Wolf as their jungler, but now, looking at what we're seeing with Team Ace... I wonder if they have the same roster. So they still have Mobile Wolf, who's running the jungle, and they still have Sky. But these additional members don't look too familiar. So I am going to say they may have had some new additions, or maybe it's just the same players, but they uh, have separate names from what I knew them as uh, last time I seen them compete. Nonetheless, uh, like I said, they did really good in the Mobile Legends Grim Academy. They've been competing all year round, and uh, they've been in the game for a while. So if I had to rate this team... I would probably stick them with a solid, I'm going to give them a B for now. We may bump them up to an A, uh, but I think a B is safe because they've definitely earned it. Like I said, they've beat some of the top tier players in Mobile Legends. They beat Mobile Zane before. I remember when they played against uh, BTK in my tournament, Cardi was actually playing on the team. Um, and they beat Cardi, so it wasn't like the full five-man BTK. I believe they were missing like one or two members, so... That's why I'm going to give them a B. I think that's pretty solid for them, though. Speaking about uh, powerhouse teams, though, next we're going to be moving on to the Bloodhounds. Now, the Bloodhounds, again, has been a pretty strong team. They've been competing all year round. Pretty much everybody knows them in North America. They are spearheaded by Boca Roscoe. He is a Twitch streamer. Uh, they've pretty much... They've actually won some of the tournaments that I've hosted. They won the Cyberpunk one. or they, No, they came in second place in the cyberpunk one they placed top eight in the nact fall uh and like i said they've been pretty consistent all year round and they haven't really made too many adjustments they've got boca roscoe as the mage templus as the gold easy peasy as the jungle ooga booga as the gold lane Serbasi as the xp and i think they have a player named Dokso as the xp or a sub for something i'm not entirely sure i just kind of snubbed their roster and took a look at it uh briefly but they are a really strong team I would have to honestly bump them up to a possible A tier. I would put them above Team Ace just because they've gone a little bit higher than them uh, competitively, at least in the NACTs. And they've placed higher than them in all the local tournaments that I personally hosted with both of these teams competing. Next on the list, right behind the Bloodhounds, is going to be the Vanguard. Now, the Vanguard is a really good team. Uh, they didn't really place super high in the previous NACTs, but they did compete. Uh, they fell short of the top 16 in the last NACT and also the one before that. I think they fell a little bit short. It's spearheaded by uh, Exio. He's a really good uh, individual. He's been kind of spearheading the way with coaching that team. And they're partnered up with the Bloodhounds. I know they uh, used to actually be under the Bloodhounds. I think that their name used to be the... Uh, bloodhounds academy uh but now they are officially the vanguard did a little bit of a name change and created their own identity 
You are going to have Exio there, Baby Blaze, Vic, Om, um, Foop, Kenshi, and Blake Cutie. Like I said, most of these players, I've seen them compete in the Mobile Legends Grim Academy all year round. They're very consistent. They don't really change their roster too much, and that's what I love to see out of a lot of these teams in North America. Most teams disband after they fell in NACT, and this is what will give a team like uh, Vanguard the slightest advantage. So... I will say they have a pretty decent hero pool. They know how to draft. I know uh, XGO is a fan of uh, Blacklist and uh, the Ube strat and things of that nature, too. He's always looking for interesting drafts. He's always keeping uh, people on their toes. This is a high drafting team as well. I'm going to give them a D. And honestly, that's not really the worst rating, considering this is not all the teams in the NACT. This is about probably 11 or less. And there's 156 teams registered, which means out of all the teams, these are the ones I really knew the most about. And I've seen compete more than the others, meaning they're still pretty high compared to the other teams who are not listed on today's tier list. So that is where I'm going to be putting the Vanguard so far. They will be sitting in that D position, but hey, they got to prove their merit. And I'm looking forward to seeing them this uh, spring season. Next on the list is going to be Idyllix. Idyllix has been a team that has competed in the Mobile Legends Scrim Academy for a while too, all year round. Uh, they used to be one of the best in our server. We used to see them go up against Team Chubbies. We would always say the best in the East versus the best in the West. Uh, and they were a pretty strong team. High hero pool, high mechanics. Unfortunately, they didn't make it too high in many of the tournaments. and They didn't compete in a lot of tournaments last year for me to be able to give them that high of a rating. But I will say they do have a high hero pool. And for an amateur team out there trying to make it to the top 16, they are going to have an advantage over them, which will put them officially in the D slot. Next on the list, we're going to be moving over to Gosu. For those who don't know, this is one of the most famous teams in North America, spearheaded by Gosu General, and they've been competing since the beginning of Mobile Legends Bang Bang. I believe they competed in M1 as well, and they are back at it again, trying to grind it out and win the NACT Spring Season. This is going to be very interesting. The last time we've seen uh, Gosu in the NACT, I believe it was the Spring Season, and then they had a little bit of issues with their team and split down the middle. And it ended up resulting in Fallout uh, pushing forward as a new team name in a separation from Gosu. But now, this is the original Gosu back at the roots with Gosu General. And I can't wait to see where they go. And to rate them, honestly, this is going to be a little bit of a tricky one. We're going to actually need to take a look at their roster and see exactly who's running. I know they have Gosu General. And he is going to be running inside of the gold lane as their main and then also inside of the jungle you are going to have gosu zero he's a nasty assassin player really good on his fanny high hero pool good gushin good lance a lot you name it he knows how to play it uh, i would say he's definitely a high mechanical jungler xp lane is going to be merciless he's from area 77 if i'm not mistaken i believe that's merciless from area 77 but it's kind of tricky because a lot of these players use the same names but if that is Merciless from Area 77, that means they have an, even more of an advantage considering he uh, placed in NACT Top 8 before, which would give him more of a boost against other teams. And then they also have uh, Reckless. And Reckless played on another team as well. I believe it was... Uh, I think he was from the Night Horde. I think he was the roamer on the Night Horde back in the day on uh, NACT as well. This may have been the NACT Fall Top 8 and uh, maybe he switched over to Gosu, or this could be just an entirely different uh, Reckless that I haven't seen before. Like I said, some of these names are repetitive, but if that is the case, then I believe that he will be the roamer, and that will give him even more of an advantage. Boomy, don't really know too much about Boomy. I think Boomy is the substitute gold lane uh, for Gosu General when he's not playing. And then you have Paul, which I'm assuming Paul is the, uh, the mage, Exile Paul for uh, Gosu, so... Let me know what you guys think. If you have any more information on them, I would love to know about it. But in terms of where we'd place them on our tier list, I am going to give Team Gosu a solid B. Just because, like I said, I haven't actually seen Gosu General himself place high on the totem pole recently. And I haven't really seen them compete in a lot of tournaments last year either outside of the NACT. And the part of Gosu that prevailed in the NACT is not there anymore. So I will give him a B just from the boost of Gosu General and also Merciless and Powerless. And now moving on, we're going to go to another powerhouse team, and this is actually going to be Area 77. Now, Area 77 has been a fan favorite for a while. They placed in the top four for the NACT uh, fall, 
and they did a really good job. They were the first ones to get knocked out, but uh, overall, they were a really solid team. I had the pleasure of being able to interview them as well. Uh, you do have Smiling, Easy Peasy, Tarzan, Mark Cutie, Yureshi, Gals Cutie, Jules Cutie, and Jay. That's a pretty stacked roster. Uh, Yureshi is actually on the team, which is interesting. I thought he would have been a part of BTK. Uh, he has international experience. He's a really good shot caller, and he really knows how to draft, which is a very strong weapon to have in their toolbox for Area 77. Gals Cutie, really solid uh, roamer. He did his thing in the NACT. He's one of the best shows I've seen in North America. Mark Cutie, I believe, uh, yeah, he did really good too. He was the marksman for uh, Area 77, and he was one of my favorites uh, last NACT when they placed top eight. So I'll definitely give them credit where it's due. Then you have Tarzan, who I believe is running in the jungle. Uh, and it's been a minute since I've seen them play, but I believe Tarzan is the jungler. I've heard I've heard about him in the jungle before and how good it's been. Uh, and overall, like I said, Area 77, they've just been more dominant. It's been kind of hit or miss, though. Like, I've seen Area 77 do really well in an NACT, and then I've seen them do really bad. I feel like it's kind of the flip of the coin on really what's going with their synergy. Oftentimes, they kind of switch things up, and that's where it kind of is their downfall. But hopefully this time around... Uh, they've worked out their kinks, and they'll have a really good season. Like I said, the last season wasn't that bad. They did place the top four, so I'm going to have to give them a pretty decent rating. I would say for Area 77, especially with the addition of Yureshi, I'm going to have to give them a A tier. Honestly, if I could go like A+, plus, it would be slightly higher than Bloodhounds. Next on the list, we have Novacore. Now, Novacore is an interesting team. A lot of players probably don't know them unless you were watching a lot of the local tournaments, but... They were a pretty strong team in the Mobile Legends Grim Academy. They competed in multiple tournaments that I hosted, and they placed pretty high. I would say like top eight every time of the local tournaments. Uh, they were one of the best in the Mobile Legends Grim Academy, and they have a freaking stacked roster. They got like over 10 players on their team right now. This is a little bit different from the Nova Corps that I did see previously, though. I don't see a lot of the familiar names uh, from what I've seen in the past, so I don't know if it's really specifically the same team. But again, I made this roster based off teams that I know or at least heard about and seen them compete before and hoping they still have that same type of synergy and play style. So I will say with limited information for Nova Corps, definitely put them on the map. I will say they are going to be in the D slot, but it's an unknown. I would say uh, I'm going to pay a close eye to them in this NACT Stage 1 qualifiers and see how they do, but I can't place them higher than a D just yet. Next on the list, we have the infamous... Gaming Gladiators, and for those who don't know, this is the famous TOB with a rebrand after a sponsorship and now going under Gaming Gladiators, which is a Dota 2 org, pretty huge, and the biggest sponsor currently inside of uh, North America, so definitely congratulations to them. And uh, they have a pretty stacked team. Like I said, this was TOB. We've seen them. They were the, the ones holding the banner for North America inside of M5 and through all the international tournaments last year. You have a little bit of a roster adjustment, though. You have Hoon, who's still running on the team. He is the mid lane. Zia will be running in that marksman position. Best player still running on the jungle. Shark is in the roam position. And then you also have Fried Chicken, which is the new adjustment, and he is going to be running in the XP lane. Fried Chicken used to play with BTK. We've seen him on the Valley. Really solid XP laner. Honestly quoted as one of the best XP laners in North America and across the world. And placed uh, third inside of uh, M3 alongside BTK. I got to give him credit where it's due, man. Uh, with this team, I mean, last NACT, uh, TOB was blowing teams through the water with ease, right? They were pretty much flawless. They barely ever lost. Had an almost undefeated record. Best record we've ever had in the NACT period, and, and that's all NACTs included, and that is going to put them at the top. Nothing out of the ordinary, though. Definitely not a surprise. I would say uh, TOB deserved the spot, now known as Gaming Gladiators, and they will be our official first S-tier team. Next on the list, we have Team Legacy. That is a team spearheaded by Assassin Riles. For those who don't know, he's an amazing YouTuber. I remember on my journey when I wanted to be a pro player. I was looking up guides on how to play assassin heroes, you name it, and his YouTube videos were the first ones that I'd come across, and he was just such a heavy threat. He's played with uh, a lot of big name players, such as uh, Gosu General, Mova Zane and them know him, uh, and he's just kind of 
famous across the NA scene. Now, I will say Legacy, I'm not too familiar with everybody on his team, but I do know he is a very dedicated player, uh, and he definitely has what it takes to play on the next level, and he's not your average jungler. So I will give this team probably a, uh, I would say a C tier rating. Well, I would almost say D because I don't really know too much about them, but I know he's going to give them a little bit more of the cutting edge. So uh, I'll be fair. I'll give them a D just because I don't really know where Assassin Riles is kind of sitting because they haven't really competed in really any local tournaments in North America that I have personally seen. Uh, and we didn't really see them do too hot in any of the NACTs as well. So really just the name from Riles is going to carry them to that D slot. This is one that I'm actually super excited about. This one, I believe, is going to be a powerhouse in North America. And you want to keep a close eye on them. And that is going to be Devious Activity. First of all, the name itself is kind of crazy. It just lets you know they're up to some crazy things. Um, but Devious Activity, man, is a stacked team from players that have placed in the top eight, in the top four, and pretty much are well-known throughout the North American scene. You've got Yato, you've got T from BTK, you've got Kush, who's played on BTK, he's played a, uh, on a lot of major teams. You've got Mikasa, you've got Gina, and then you also got Super Melon and Houdini. This team is nuts, man. They got a lot of players, like I said, all across the board. Uh, I believe some of them are Ackerman as well, so this is going to be a pretty strong team. I think uh, they definitely have what it takes to place top eight and possibly top four. I would say for Devious Activity, if I had to give them a rating, they would be a A-tier team. I would almost give them an S-tier. Honestly, I would. I really want to bump them up there. Uh, but the only thing that's kind of catching me off guard with this team is who's going to be playing the Rome position. A lot of them are multi-role. Mikasa, known for that crazy Freya. Uh, Kush, I've seen him run every single uh, role in Mobile Legends Big Bang. I've actually played him one-on-one, -on -one, and the dude is a monster. Uh, but it's hard for me to rate them when I don't know who's going to really run that roam position. I heard it's going to be T, and I'm just not really sure how strong of a roamer T is versus his XP lane. They do have Gina, though. Gina is a really good marksman. Just helping them sit in that A spot for a tier, but I can't give them the S yet until I really know where that roam position is sitting like because that is definitely going to determine their synergy in a lot of their big plays. Next on the list, we have the Night Horde. It's no secret. Everybody should know this team if you're from the North American scene. Uh, they've hosted a lot of local tournaments. They're led by Talon, who is an organizer for Moonton, who hosts all the in-person events for Mobile Legends Bang Bang. A lot of them have been inside of New York, Los a Angeles, California, you name it. He's been there. I think he may be doing one in Florida soon, and I'm definitely excited about it. But nonetheless... Night Horde is a team that has been competing for a while now. They did have a slight issue in the past. I believe uh, they got caught for piloting. Now, I'm not going to throw this on this specific team, but it was player old players who are not on this roster no more who got caught for piloting. Not these players here. They're pretty solid, really valid. They have a huge Discord server of like 5,000 plus members, and they have a ginormous fan base. So I'm going to say with Night Horde, with the synergy they have, as long as they've been playing, I'm still... Still going to give them a, I would say, possibly C. I would give them a C. And honestly, you know what? Now that I'm looking at this, I would also give uh, the Vanguard a C. I'll bump them up just because of uh, how hard they've been working and how hard they've been grinding and how many local tournaments I've seen them compete in. I would give them a slight advantage and bump both of them up to the C. But that's as high as they're going to go. When it comes to Night Horde, uh, they placed in the top eight for NACT Fall which is going to give them a huge boost over a lot of teams. But they didn't do too hot once they got in there. Honestly, they took a lot of losses. Um, and I haven't really seen them compete in a lot of these local tournaments so far. I will say, though, they've been playing for a while. They don't often change their roster. And they're still spearheaded by the same manager, which is Tyrant, who's also, I believe, their roamer as well. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and put them in the C position. I'm going to put them right next to... Uh, the Vanguard, but I can't really say that they're going to be better than Gosu and Team Ace, but I will say they're like slightly below that level. Next on the list, we're going to go ahead and go forward with the Forgotten Ones. Now, this team kind of slipped my mind for a minute, and then I had to reread their name, and I was like, man, this looks really familiar. They competed in the Mobile Legends Cyberpunk qualifiers or tournament, and they lost in the qualifiers. Uh, to Ignis Esports, but Ignis Esports was the one who actually won the entire tournament, so I can't really say that 
this is a bad team. They just lost to the number one team in the first round of the tournament, which sometimes the cards kind of play out that way. But Forgotten Ones could be a potential one to, to watch out for, and that's why I kind of put them on the list because I have seen them actually compete before, uh, meaning they have been around in the professional scene for a little minute. They didn't just jump out of nowhere. And like I said, with this tier list, we're putting teams in that we've actually seen compete or at least seen them in one or two local tournaments. I'm going to put Forgotten Ones, though. You know, I heard they beat BTK, though. I think they, I'm pretty sure Forgotten Ones was the ones that beat BTK last year in the NACT spring season and knocked them out of the qualifiers. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. I'm pretty sure that's this team, though. And I'm going to go ahead and place them at a C tier next to the Night Horde and also next to the Vanguard. And then saving the best for last or last but not least, BTK. Now, this team is going to be a very fun one, right? BTK has been one of the main names for North America since the beginning of our stardom. When you had Moba Zayn spearheading the way, they placed third inside of M3 and did an amazing job. They got taken down by uh, the two Filipino teams, Blacklist, uh, and then took us down. But nonetheless, I would say BTK is uh, definitely a top-tier team. One of the best teams that we currently have in... Uh, They've won the last NACT uh, spring. They lost in the NACT fall. They got knocked down by Avalon, but there was a lot of roster adjustments, and a lot of those players aren't on this team now. Uh, and we're also going to have to speak about BTK. Like we said, roster adjustments is everything, uh, and with the new BTK, there is some slight changes that you have to note. Nami is their manager. You have Basic now running in the gold lane. Mobazane is still going to be running the jungle. Another addition to the team is going to be Cold World, who we've seen play on the Simpsons. He is going to be their roamer. Nicolette is back in the building. Nicolette is going to be running that mage position, one of the few female players in Mobile Legends Bang Bang on the professional scene. Then you've got Milo, which I always thought this is going to be pretty intense, seeing Milo and Mobazane on the same team. Who would have thought that ever would have happened? But, man, I'm excited for them. I'm glad they put their differences aside, and hopefully they can make better for NA with a great BTK team. Milo is going to be the XP lane. And then they have G1, which I'm not really sure who G1 is. They also have Midnight as well. Uh, Midnight has played in the NACT before and placed top eight. And then they also got Cardi on the team for any of those Cardi fans, as I believe he is going to be running the backup XP lane behind Milo so far. But the thing about BTK is things are always changing with them and their rosters, and they're always practicing, man. I bet you right now they're running a full five-man rank or, or five-man scrim practicing, getting ready for the NACT spring season. So with the new NACT on the way and the new reformed BTK, I'm going to place them in the S tier, no secret there, and they're going to be right next to the Gaiman Gladiators. And there you have it, guys. That is going to be the complete tier list for teams that we personally know or have seen compete in the NACT spring season or fall season of last year and local tournaments across North America. Keep in mind, this tier list is only based on my own personal experience in tournaments that I've hosted or tournaments that we've seen across North America last year. And teams that were not listed on here does not mean that they're not good. It just means that I don't have enough information about them. There's 156 teams registered, and some of them are a lot of new players, and some of them are possible name changes from players that may have been in the top eight who we just don't know about because they changed their name. But if there's any teams out there that you guys recommend us check out, definitely drop it in the comments below, and I'll do a review on them and another update to the power tier list. Guys, we are four days away from the Open Qualifiers Stage 1, and it will be live on our YouTube channel. I'll make sure to uh, send a notification out to everybody that's subscribed, so make sure you guys subscribe to today's video and also like the video as well so you can be notified for when that comes available. But like I said, we're going to be watching all of these powerhouse teams fight their way up to the top 16 in North America, and you're not going to want to miss out. As always, guys, I appreciate y'all. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And I can't wait to see you guys on the next one. Peace. Turn me up.